welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the JH Money Spotlight. I am your host, James Lott Jr. Coming to you from, lo- well, actually sunny Los Angeles. It's really sunny here right now and a little warm, um, but it's, it's nice out. And so everybody, happy fall to everyone. This is our first show um, during the fall. It'll be kind of happening recently. And, uh, and so as you guys like to know, I like to bring on guests, people who have done the show, Oh, you give us their perspective. You guys tell me you love this kind of stuff. And we have a guy who's done so many things. I mean, I mean, we're talking, I knew him from Glee as, as Coach Ken Tanaka, of course. But he's done Men of a Certain Age. He's done iZombie. He was a narrator for Deadliest Decade. He's done a show called Pads. I mean, he's done, just, I mean just, his IMDb is, is long. You guys have been doing some studies. He's a working actor. And I'm glad to have him on my show today. Uh, joining us, Mr. Patrick Gallagher. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Good, good. And how are you today? I'm doing pretty well. It is pretty hot in Los Angeles today. Isn't it? it is nice a Los Angeles day. It is a nice Los Angeles day. I was like, I mean, I had to work, of course, most of the day. But being out in and around, I was like, this, this feels good. I kind of like this. You know. I mean, I'm not a, I, I, could, I prefer a little bit more. Like, you know, I grew up in Canada, so it's hot weather gets to me sometimes. But it's a nice day. I'm not going to complain too much. Yes, you are a Canadian. And see, Canadians don't complain. Canadians are nice. I like Canadians. Well, I'm a dual, I'm a dual American too, so. Oh, how lucky! I'm both. How lucky you are! Yes, I, I love I love Canada. I've been to Canada many times. Different parts of Canada, I love. I I like Canadians. Canadians seriously, when I, every time I'm there, I'm like they really are nice. Like it's really, it's like it's just crazy, compared to Los Angeles. Yeah, we are very nice. Where did, where did you go? I've been to Vancouver. So and in parts of Vancouver, I've been to Richmond, Langley. Um, I also been to Saskatchewan. I've also been to Montreal. Nice, nice. So I've done. I grew up in Vancouver. I went to school, theater school in Montreal. Um, and being mixed race, I think, you know, it gives me the opportunity to just kind of, I never really worry about it. I look at age and the character, whether I understand the character. You know, there's so many things that are out of our control. You know, if they want, you know, someone taller, someone with brown hair, that I can't control. All we can really control is what we do with the auditions and the rest of it, you know? It's, that's just the way it is or the way it isn't, so... But it certainly doesn't hurt because, you know, I can kind of, you know, it's funny because I didn't play a lot of Asian characters when I was younger. It, it, it was, uh, I ended up getting a nice little string there with Ken Tanaka and, and, you know, Tilda on it. That's the end of it. It was nice, you know. Yeah. I'm just an actor, though. I'm just, I'm just a person. Patrick Gallagher is just a person. I, let's make that a quote. Patrick Gallagher, Gallagher is just a person. Person. That's Just like everybody else. <laughs> and so we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, some of the other stuff you've done. But uh, like I said here on JH Money Spotlight, we spotlight actors um, and who come on the show. And so it doesn't matter to me. There are no small parts at all. Like in all seriousness, there isn't. And I always want to hear what you know how your experience was now folks if you just refresh your memory patrick played a guard where heather weber was being held we always go to this place this mental hospital and he was a guard and you had some you had a bunch of lines like you were like you were you had some you had some serious lines you had to work with the wonderful roger howarth who of course is so oh, royalty he was, he was so great to work with i had a really wonderful time on that show actually um it was kind of a bucket list thing for me i I used to watch it, which, you know, don't tell anybody. I used to watch soap operas when I was young. <gasps> you know, I got, I got sick once, and I used to live at home during the day, and I started watching it. And I remember um, it was when Scorpios and, um, oh, I can't remember the character's name, Fiona, whoever she played. Oh, yeah, Anna. And I felt like mm-hmm. I kind of remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and their kid was making me for a while, and so I went through a phase of watching it. Um, but being a character actor... You know, you don't think of someone like me, you know, the soap is are made of the beautiful people, you know, and you don't mm-hmm. really get a chance. So I jokingly said to my agent one day that one of my bucket lists to a soap opera, or my manager, and he luckily knew the producers of that show and said, well, I'll get you on it. And, you know, time went by and you kind of, you kind of think, well, yes or no, yes or no. And then finally they called me and gave me this really wonderful part to play. And it was really, really great. It was really fun for me. So, and Roger was great. Did you get? Did you have to uh, audition at all for Mark Teschner, the uh, casting director? No, I was lucky that uh, he knew me and I'd done enough work, and they they looked for a role that was right for me. So I was, you know, I was able to get a role that they knew that I could play from from what they'd seen. So Mark was great. Everyone was really nice. Um, it's fast, though. I gotta tell you. Tell, please, no, please tell people the pacing. This is not some. It's not your. This is not some baby. You know, acting gig. This is for real, isn't it? No. Yeah. Now. 
I'm sure people have heard this, but, you know, you show up at 8 o'clock in the morning and you go home at 6, you're probably actually on set and working for an hour of that time. Um, I have an acting coach who put it really well, I think, that actors get paid for the waiting to do the acting part. Oh, right. Um, so yeah, there's usually a lot of time, but this was really, I kind of like these. I think I showed up at 2 o'clock and was gone at 3, and you just, you have to be prepared. Wow. Pop down all your lines down, and you just kind of do it, and leave, which I really like. I mean, it works for me. Some people, some actors get really nervous with that. Other actors, you know, want to be prepared, you know, down to the detail. I'm lucky that I'm a little bit of a loosey, you know. Mm. Um, I like to leave things open. So, I just had to make sure I have my lines down, which you think you do sometimes. I didn't have them quite as well as I wanted, so. But luckily, Roger was great. We went over it a few times, and he was so much fun to work with. Yeah, I was saying now he because he's, he's he's considered soap royalty. So he's been around for a long time. Uh, he plays some memorable soap roles, and he's and this and this Franco character is very interesting. Um, did you guys run lines beforehand at all? Did you get to meet before, or was it just straight on the set? Yeah, yeah. he was he was hanging around. You know, you sort of just hang around downstairs and get dressed and wait for them to call you up over at PA. You know, it's a, it's very it's a little different than doing other TV shows, and, and they're moving fast. And so we we went over it a couple times. We got I got to run it. We were sort of rehearsing a little bit for the camera and went over stuff there and had some time. Uh, but he was great because he did it very differently than, than I thought when I read it. What I thought was going to come back to me, which I always loved as an actor. You know, he had some humor to it and and changed yes. my performance a little bit. Actually, it made me feel more sorry for him on that second scene. How so interesting! Actor, you know, to get something back. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, because I was playing the guard going, oh, your mom doesn't want to talk to you, don't worry about it. But he was so funny and so, had so much more emotion going. I couldn't help but kind of feel a little sorry for, for Franco, which is nice as an actor. That's what you want. Yeah. It was great. Um, and yeah, I can say I've done a soap, but not just any soap, General Hospital. Hello, 54 years on the air, 55 years on the air, uh, soap. I know, that's almost as old, I'm almost as old as that show. Oh, me, me too. I think you and I are around the same age, I think. I think we're the same age. Yeah, I turned 50, I turned 50 in February. Okay, well, I, and, and, I'm next, and I'm next May, so I know how, yes, I know how that is. Um, but, no, but, so, but yeah, but I was going to say, it's, it's funny, it's almost like theater. I would feel like, it, I would think it would feel like theater. Did it feel like theater? You kind of being in that small space, you and him, one-on-one, -on -one, working the scene out. To me, to me, it did and it didn't, because theater, you don't have the audience. It felt like this hybrid of, multi-camera sitcom but you're doing a dramatic show mm. uh, because when you when you shoot you know an episodic or a film they move the cameras to you and they'll you know they'll place you where you know when you're not on a set for example you know the, the camera works a little different this was a little bit um, more like doing multi-camera where the cameras are there and you have to angle yourself it's all very technical actory stuff yeah um, yeah it was, it was a little bit like doing a dramatic it felt like a multi-cam you know, situation comedy, but it wasn't a comedy. Interesting. So, okay. Okay. But yeah, of course, but yeah. You... Ultimately, ultimately, for but ultimately for me, you know, once we get on there, it's always you know, you're just acting, you know, which is why I like doing it. As it you all comes down to the same thing. As you get older, has it been easier to remember lines or harder? Uh, actually, easier because for me anyway, experience helps, which is why you know I think soaps are great training ground for actors because you have to learn lines very quickly you move so quickly I've just done it enough that I guess my brain is set to memorize lines fairly quickly I've never had a real problem with it actually you know um, that makes sense so I was able I, it's, it's never been something that worries me I mean I've been lucky enough to be you know recurring and regular on a couple of the shows and you know there are days when you're just moving along you know you yeah. can't really memorize everything the next day I don't like to do that some actors like to do that I like to keep it kind of loose yeah. so I'm used to doing a scene having an hour off memorizing the next three pages, having half an hour memorizing the next three pages doing it. So, someone's got a different way of doing it. I just never worried about mine because we have to say them. So, there's no <laughs> point worrying about not saying them. I mean, we have to memorize them. So, why worry about it? I like that. Actually, I like that. I like that. Um, now, I have, friends who, I have friends who always talk about they can't memorize lines. And I said, Well, you've done 60 plays. Have you ever not memorized them? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What was it like working for Ryan Murphy on a Ryan Murphy production when you were doing Glee? I mean, how was, I mean, probably completely different, obviously. That was, that was incredible. I mean, it was, it kind of shocked me how long ago that was. We actually shot it almost exactly, uh, we shot it October, late, mid-October of 
2008. Oh, wow. Shot the That's nine years ago. Wow. And we shot the pilot. Yes. yes. And that was an amazing, because that was such a great show. I mean, that's yes. what you sort of look at. Them. We had no idea what that was going to be. It was so kind of groundbreaking at the time. Yes. You know, I hope people are going to like this. But when we did the pilot, we just were shooting this really great, quirky show with great dialogue and great characters and a great message. And, and then it just blew up. And it was, uh, it was an incredible experience. And I got some beautiful stuff to play there. You know, I mean, yes. I got to sort of play, you know, kind of a love interest. Ken Tanaka was this really amazing kind of flawed, but in my mind, beautiful character. And it was, it was a really amazing. I was going to say, yeah, you do. I mean, I, I, I remember you. I, I watched the show. I was a big fan. I was, I was a Gleek. I was the whole thing. And you're right. It was such a unique show at the time. There was nothing else like it on television. Yeah. And it really did not just blow up on TV, but blew up in the culture and on the charts and in, in yeah. music. I mean, like, it just completely. I mean, it was, I mean, there was like 20 songs a week from Glee on the charts. And everybody's talking about that, the stars. And it was just crazy. How did you guys handle all that while it was going on you, that you are, in your recollection? Luckily, I didn't have to sing, and they were all young. I don't, you know, I mean, I, I don't honestly don't think they could have done it if they weren't young. I mean, as I get older, I don't have as much energy. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't do Night in Museum now, not the first one. I couldn't run like that. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I couldn't. I was, I was, it was 40 pounds of yaks. For me. <laughs> but you do it. You know, and I think, it, I think the thing that people have to realize, as hard as the work is, as long as the days are, it's always fun. I mean, look what we get to do. Yeah. I mean, I, every day I go on set, I'm like, look what we get to do. Mm -hmm. You know? What is it? So, you know, I'm not one with a lot of patience in myself for complaining about my sorry lot in life and the business because I've been very, very fortunate. And it's, you know, I get to do what I love doing and it never feels like work to me. Ever. I like that. I like that, and I and I understand that because I I've had that same experience, you know I'm in, in being in the business. Yeah, there are times when things you know, go up and down, or you just are just really tired. A long day happens, but you know I'm like, I've had jobs that I literally have hated, and like hated going to, let alone doing the job. And I love yeah. what I do. I love what I do. Yeah, and that's and that's the key. You know, I'm the same way. Well, the tertiary stuff can be a bit of a pain in the butt. You know, the, right. the business is tough. on that one. What a great attitude. I'll tell you, people who've been in the business for a while, I'm seeing it just, I've, I've interviewed hundreds of people and, I just, and it's just getting to a point where I'm seeing that you guys seem to get it. Like, you get it. It's a job, but also it's a calling. You love doing it. It's something you get to do all the time. You get to have these different experiences all the time, be kind of nomadic and a gypsy, so to speak, and, and become different people. And that is, it actually is a really amazing thing to be able to do that for a living. It really is. And I, and I think that it's important you know, I went through a period when I first started in Toronto where I went to theater school with Sandra O. Oh, okay. Um, I was in, I was, yeah, we went to National Theater School together, and she just blew up in a lot. And we had a really amazing theater acting class. We graduated everybody, which is almost unheard of in that school. Wow. And people just took off. I mean, we were a great class. We were, you know, we, we had this really great bond together. And I was working, but I was getting a lot of what we call under five. In Canada, they're called act roles. And I was getting one after another. Bug to coffee. I got a little bit bitter, and I had to leave Toronto. Because bitterness will kill you. I mean, what yes. do I get with that? I mean, I, I literally do this every day. It sounds corny, but when I get on set, I literally stand there at some point and just tell you what I told you to myself. Look where I am, look what I get to do. You know, and once, I just try to avoid bitterness at all costs. Because to me, that, that's a career killer. It seems yeah. that you know, we can't be true to ourselves. People can sense it. Um, we're just not authentic, which is what acting needs to be. I mean, acting is all about truth. Yes. You know, and if your truth is bitter, then, well, you know, not a lot of roles you're going to get to that. So, and it just doesn't help to do that. So that's what I try to avoid. <sighs> I like that. As I get older and older and older, I think, weirdly enough, I actually realize more how fortunate I am than when you get started. You know, because then you start seeing people struggle, and I'm an acting class, and see these people that were my age, and I go, God, how lucky was I? 
get the breaks I got. To be able to do this as a living. So. Yeah, sure. You, you start seeing people drop off or people having, you know, issues, uh, people struggling, people who really make it. Like, you know, you see, you can see it. Once you, once you stay in the, on the path long enough, stay in the business long enough, you see it all kind of. And um, it's really interesting to kind of, you know, stay in your lane and just kind of keep going forward and saying, yeah, I'm not going to become jaded. I'm going to, I'm really going to continue to enjoy what this is. Like, like, Absolutely. Can. And it, does, it, it doesn't mean we don't have low days. No. And after the flows and we're human beings. But you're right, exactly. You're not going to get jaded. Yeah. Where can folks find you on social media if they wanted to say hi to you? Well, uh, my Twitter is at Patrick T Man, and then I have a, a Facebook page of Patrick Dallas. Now, I be warned, I've shifted my Twitter a little bit away from business to uh, politics. So okay. Prepared when you go on there, I'm, uh, I think that you know there's some things that transcend business, and Donald Trump is one of them. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. So that's, that's, good, that's good to know, folks. See that? So Patrick Gallagher, um, any 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 projects coming up you can talk about or not? I think anything happening coming up or just or nothing you can mention? Uh, well, I'm recurring on a, on a show called Siren, which is this really great free phone show. Oh, okay. Um, it's about mermaids, but it's not, it's not happy Disney mermaids. These are real mermaids. It's kind of a you know, Disney mermaid story. It's kind of a Disney mermaid story. Um, I think it's going to come out. I just shot a couple episodes, uh, and I think it's going to come out on Freeform in July of 18, or summer of 18. Okay. And then uh, I've got a couple other things sort of percolating. And, Good. You know, I'm just relaxing. I mean, you know, you know, there's a good episode as well. Yes. So hopefully, hopefully other stuff will come by. Yes. Well, you guys. Uh, enjoying the weather. Yeah, enjoy the weather. So you guys, Patrick Gallagher, of course, he, he played on uh, Drew Hospital. He had a good time. Um, the GH Mini Spotlights are on. They're on iTunes. They're on Spreaker.com under GH Mini Spotlights. We have a Facebook page, GH Mini Spotlights. Go there and like the page, share it. This this will be on there as all of other episodes we've done in the past with other guests on the show. Um, and uh, you can follow me, of course, with James Live Jr. here at Patrick G-Man. Patrick, thanks for being on the show. No problem. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Please. Well, Ooh, downside's not crazy. I think I just wrestled about the Dodie, actually. I think I did. So that's going to be oh, that'd be fun. That'd be great. Sideways was good. I love, I love Sideways. That was a great movie. Thank you. Yeah, that was an incredible thing. I've been very working. You, know, to work with you have been working. You've been, I think you've been around. Before that, I don't work, but I was entertained. Yeah, I've been really fortunate. No, yeah, you've been, you've, I said, check out his IMDb, folks. He's been in some stuff. Trust me. He's where he's, he's a, your definition of a working, you're a working actor. So that's, your two definitions. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'm happy about that. I'm happy. I want to go die for people like, I kind of know you, which is, you know, for a character actor, that's perfect. Yes. <laughs> totally. Where do I know you from? Where do I know you from? Know you from? Well, you know, that there's that documentary. There's a, there's that documentary, um, that guy from that thing, and that girl from that, that gal yeah, yeah, from that yeah. thing. And I love those. He's like, yeah. and I would go, oh, my God, you know that girl from that thing. Like, you just you just kind of, you're that guy. But I knew when I saw it, and I like, like cause I, cause I approached you, I kind of knew who you were, though, because I, 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 I say Glee and a few other things, and I, Zombie, I saw you, a few things I've seen you in. So I was like, I know who he is, but for some folks, they're like, yeah, I remember him from that thing. But I thought, like, yes, you know who he is. You've seen him. You've seen Ken. He's been around. Yeah, Yeah. You know, so I'm just happy that you know that they want to. I'm just happy and, and proud that they want to talk to me. So. You know, I'm most people was like. Sometimes my mother doesn't want to. <laughs> I'm kidding. My mother always talks. To me. Well, you know, I always say you can call me anything you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. I'm like, just I will be there. Just <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, I, especially me, I've lost 25 pounds, but I feel like. <laughs> it's harder to get older to lose weight. Trust me, I, I I'm the same way. I've lost twelve pounds so far, and it's like it's, it's like, it ain't easy like it used to be. Whew. You know, I lost twenty five. I thought it was really easy. I didn't die. I just I literally I, I found my own style. I just cut calories. Yeah. You know, I just cut calories. I just didn't eat that much. I just ate what I wanted to eat. Yeah. And that's the way it is. You know, good. Congratulations. I can't, I can't deprive myself because I look like if I go on a diet and I lose like 40 pounds with a special food, then as soon as I stop eating a special food, I'm not ready. At least in my mind, I said, I'm not going to be prepared to eat quote unquote normal food. Right. And I looked at my sort of skinny friends and said, well, they eat what I want to eat. Ah, they eat less of it. And they don't eat it all day. 
Yes. Oh, that was my revelation. So. Yes, I like that. Yeah, you know, so thank you. I call it my lazy dieting. I, I'm not really dieting either. I'm just kind of, like you said, just watching kind of what I'm eating here and there because you're right. I don't want to yeah. deprive myself so and then later on want to eat it again and then I blow up like a, a blowfish. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Not doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, at all. No, no, I ain't getting any younger, so. Yes. I want to go see what it's like. To, I'm also doing that while I still can. Yes. So, you guys, thank you. It's Patrick Gallagher. Thank you guys for listening to the show, and we will talk to you next time. Thank you very much. Had a great time. See you guys later. Bye.